Hello everybody, Lana Lamb here. I'm just coming with a very quick, fun, easy Valentine Day video for you. If you want to paint along, you can grab the line drawing. It lists the paints and the brushes that I used, and it's just pretty much that. It's the line drawing, the list, and uh, uh, a color photo in the uh, PDF. So it's not got a lot of information, but you can get all the information you need right here watching this video. So you can go over to lanalam.com and grab that. It's titled Chocolate Covered Strawberry and um, just have a lot of fun with it. So this is what we're going to be doing today. I've done it on two different sizes here. This is a 6x6 wood panel and this is a 5x7. So I'm going to be painting on the other side of this one actually today. So you can kind of see um, how they'll look on different sides. This would be so cute on a bag. Um, just really adorable. Um, but it's, it's just a fun, easy one that I think that uh, you can uh, enjoy painting. So we're going to get started. I've just got a few brushes here, and I do list them uh, on that free line drawing. I've got a 10-0 liner, a half inch flat, a one inch, or a half inch angle, a one inch flat, a three-eighths inch um, stencil brush, but you could use a half inch, a two round, and a quarter inch uh, angle. You're going to need stylus, washi tape, because I've taped off. This is a quarter inch washi tape, so I've just taped off the entire edge so we can have this nice, fun little border on here. Gray graphite, stylus, line drawing, and if you so desire, a round stencil, um, circle stencil. This is a three quarter inch size. I do have this on my website as well. So you can check that out or just paint in some, draw in some circles and paint them in. Um, or just, they don't have to be perfectly formed circle shapes. They can just be irregular shapes in the background, okay? So we're going to get started here. I've got mine taped off already, so I don't need that. I'm not going to need to put my um, pattern on quite yet. I want to get the background painted. So we're going to be using this three-quarter inch flat brush right here to paint in our base color for our background. So I'm just going to use some black and white for this and mix it to make, I made like a medium to dark gray back here. Um, something that won't overpower our strawberry, but that we can still get that beautiful bouquet effect on there. So just some black and white, and you're just going to need, like, I do list the colors that I used, a red, a green, and a yellow, um, and some kind of brown for your chocolate part. <laughs> so let's get our background painted here. So I'm dampening my one inch flat. Now this is a large brush. It will hold a lot of water, and I don't really want a ton of water in my brush when I paint this background in. So I squeezed out the majority of it. So I'm just going to slowly add some black in here to my white to create, move this over so you can see it, to create a dark, medium to dark gray. So I'm just slowly adding in uh, black. And that looks like a really nice color there. So I'm starting in the middle so I don't get any built up under my tape. I do not usually paint with a brush <laughs> when I'm putting my background color in. I generally always paint with a two inch foam roller. Um, but since this is such a small piece, I decided to just go with the brush. And you see I'm pulling towards the center of the um, uh, surface here instead of pushing towards the tape. That's going to help keep my um, paint from going underneath my tape and bleeding under. So, And this is also going to help seal the tape with this first layer. We will put a second layer on here. So I'm just going to smooth out as best I can here and quickly dry it and apply a second layer. Now we are not going to remove the tape until after we get that bouquet effect in the background then. Oops. As you can see on here, we're going to do that on there first. So let's get this dry. This should be a fairly fast project, a fun one. Um, of course you can enlarge or reduce this, um, do more than one strawberry, but I thought just one 
a quick little strawberry would be fun for Valentine's Day, so that's what I'm going with. All right, so I'm dry and I'm not hot. I don't want to be painting on my surface if it is hot from the um, the heat tool that I just used. We're not going to see a lot of this background when we're done. And that first layer should have sealed our tape, so we shouldn't have to worry too much about the second layer going underneath our tape. We just want to make sure we get all the way to the tape painted so that we don't have any areas that we are seeing a light edge on. All right, I'm going to hold this up real quick because I have quite the glare on here and see how I'm smoothing out here. I'm going to get just a little bit of water in my brush. Not a lot because I don't want to lift that paint. So let me dry that so I can just put a quick glaze of color over here and smooth everything out. You see I've got it, of course it's still wet there, but I've got it a little bit darker right there. So I'm just going to use a wash of color here and get it all smoothed out. Our tape is sealed. Hopefully it's sealed well with our paint. And I'm just going to very quickly put a wash of this on here. And again, we won't see a lot of this, so I just I'm just trying to smooth out a little bit here. I just feel like it's not as smooth a background because I usually gen generally use a roller. So and I like that smooth, smooth background. That's why I don't generally paint my backgrounds with a brush, because I don't unless I want the textured, you know, look of the background. I do not generally <laughs> want that textured look unless I'm doing something with a textury background, you know, a modeled background or uh, something where I want to use multiple colors in the background. Uh, so that's why I generally always use a foam roller. Right, let's get this dry. We're going to go ahead and put our line drawing on. All right. Make sure that's cool. Grab a piece of scotch tape here so that we can tape our line drawing down. And just place it on here wherever you think it will look nice. I want to put a little bit of shadow underneath mine, so I think I'll move it up just a little bit. Tape it down. I'm going to move my palette because I do not want to get my tracing paper in my paint. It will completely ruin it. And we'll put it on here. Grab a stylus, and we are going to transfer in. We don't have to transfer in those little lines for the seeds or the frosting part. Um, I'll probably just draw the frosting part by hand. I don't think I quite got that on the line. By frosting, I mean the white lines that go on there. We do want our leaves on here. Okay, just your basic shape there. Probably got that a little bit higher than what it needed to be, but it's going to work out just fine. All right, so now we want to use our stencil brush. We're done with our tracing paper, unless you feel like you have to use it to put your seed lines on or um, to put your um, white icing lines on. All right, let's do our background, and we're going to be doing that with some white. I'm going to grab a little bit more white out here. And I'm going to use just my 3 8 inch stencil brush and my circle stencil. Now some of these are a little bit lighter in the background, as you can see here and even on this one. So I didn't use very much paint to create those lighter looks. So what you're going to do if you want those really light looks is load your brush and then offload it onto a dry paper towel. I mean pretty much clean all that paint out of there. And then you can go in here and start creating some uh, light 
or lighter circles right away. I'm not going to worry about getting into my strawberry there because I haven't painted it yet. So I'm just going to go around with this small amount of paint in my brush and create some light colored circles. I do want to have some really light ones down here. So I am going to put a couple down here. And you can use a much smaller stencil, circle stencil if you have a smaller one. Um, okay, so you can see that one's much lighter because I'm running out of paint in my brush. So I don't, I don't have a whole lot in here at all. I want to get these really light ones in first. Okay, I think I'll put one up here. And then I'm going to load a little bit more paint. Not a lot more, just a little bit. And we'll go in here and start adding more circles in here. I think I need just a touch more paint in there, but no, that was that was quite a bit. <laughs> Might back that off just a little bit. And then come in here and start adding. So that that had quite a paint still, quite a lot of paint still in my brush. I can touch that with my finger and kind of settle that back in there. Put another one here. Again, that seemed like it had a lot of paint on my brush still. You do want more brighter ones to come more forward. Um, but you want to do it gradually, so, you know, try to get your layers to, you know, look like they're coming gradually. And again, not worrying about being on the strawberry. That one got incredibly dark, so I may have to go back over that one and make that one a bright, bright one on the very top when we're done here. All right, just work your way around however many of these that you want to have on, on here. All up to you. This is your painting. I'm just going in with a little bit darker of a circle now. Okay, a little bit more paint in my brush, and then remove, and I'm going to go back over this one and make this one a pretty dark one, so we cannot have that such a hard line on there. I'm going to make some more, this layer is going to be a little bit more bright, so I may go back and grab more paint so that I can start creating a little bit more brighter brighter ones here and overlapping them just makes it look so much nicer I'm going to put one here Need a few more brighter ones on here. I'm going to tap this because I could tell I had a lot of paint on my brush. We won't see much of that one because of the tape. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit brighter one maybe up here which we won't see a lot of because it's going underneath that tape. And I feel like I need a brighter one up here. And maybe one more right here. Maybe just a part of one. I'm going to try and do one that's not got a lot going on right here. Just a really light one, so I'm barely, 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 barely letting that brush go inside that circle. And I think I need a couple more just incredibly bright ones on here. 
super super bright so like over here I feel like we need a really bright one I might just do about three of these do one here oh yeah that looks good and then I'll go up here and maybe make this one really bright just by adding another layer onto that looks good and then I need another one here and I know I've already put an, a second layer on this one but I'm gonna put a third and make this one super bright just by tapping it on there okay a little part of a bright one here and then maybe a little part of a bright one coming off over here Okay, I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to call that done for my background. I like it. I think it looks good. And like I said, you can have as little or as much on here as you would like. Um, totally up to you. So I'm going to rinse my stencil brush. And we're going to paint the shadow underneath the um, strawberry before we do anything else because I want to remove the tape. So let's do some black. I'm just going to side load my half inch angle brush with some black. And another good thing about doing the shadow underneath it now, I'm going to lift my easel up because I'm getting quite a glare, is that we can be done with this part and as we paint our strawberry, if it gets out into the you know, background, no big deal, because we've got it all. I'm going to use my finger and kind of blur that out. Okay. I like to blur it out with my finger, so, you know, you can use a mop brush, whatever. But I got my finger right here. It does the job that I need it to do, <laughs> like, right now. So let me dry that because I want to get it a little bit darker. Make sure it's cool. And then we'll go under here and a little bit darker shadow. Maybe bring that shadow down here a little bit. Finger, scoot it around, soften it out, blend it out. We've got a beautiful shadow underneath there. So at this point, you can remove your um, tape, or you can leave it on till the end. Totally up to you. Doesn't matter. Um, I think I'll leave it on to the end so that we can have a beautiful little, you know, finish to our painting. That always makes it so fun and satisfying when you remove that off of there. All right, I'm going to take my angle brush and paint in my um, red area. Now I could mix some white in here with this. Maybe I will just for this first layer just to get it a little bit more opaque. Now gray is the color that I wanted underneath my red because it makes my red come to life a little more and it gives me that true color of red that I am looking for right out of the bottle. So it'll take two coats on everything here, but it's pretty small, so pretty small area. It won't take too long. All right, so there's our red. Now for the chocolate that's on the strawberry, um, you've got some options. Um, you can use a burnt umber or dark chocolate. I'm going to mix a little bit of black with whichever one I use. I'll show you the difference between two. Dark chocolate is a little bit more opaque. And burnt umber is a little bit more transparent. I didn't need near that much paint out. 
but they're very similar to the same color here. Well, let me see if I can get this. So this is dark chocolate and this is burnt umber. You can see a slight difference in the two. So you can either use one or the other or combine them or whatever you would like to do. Let me fix my paint bottle here. My lid broke off so let me get my lid back on. Okay. Alright, so I'll, I'll just mix them for my first layer um, just so you can see. The burnt umber really is pretty transparent. But I want this to be kind of a rich chocolate color. So um, you can add a little asphaltum in here or you can add a little bit of black and I think on my original one I may have added a tiny bit of black just to um, darken up my chocolate and make it look more like a rich dark chocolate on my strawberry. There is a milk chocolate color in Deco Art, so if you prefer a milk chocolate color, you can certainly go with that. And everything will need two coats, so. And you can use a flat brush doing this if you want. Uh, I didn't get a flat brush out today, so I'm just going to use what brushes I got. So that was that angle brush. Now I'm going to go to a smaller brush for my leaves here. And I'm going to use a green, whatever green you have, and mix a little bit of white with it. Or you could mix... Well, I don't want to mix yellow with it because... I'm going to use yellow for my highlight. So I think I'm just going to take a little bit of white into my green and get a really pretty leaf color here. All these leaves kind of just meet right here. I don't think on my original one I had that little piece of leaf back there, but I drew it on here, so I may just take it out and make that one big leaf. Alright, then one coming off here. So there's our leaves. Let's give this a quick dry so that we can apply our second coats. Now when I go back with my red, I'm going to go with just the red, hopefully. Um, I didn't get that too smoothed out, so we'll see how this red will go on here. Make sure I'm not hot. So I'm going to have to add a little bit of white in there. I need to get a little bit smoother of a coat. I did not get it very smooth with my first layer, so I had a lot of brush strokes in there. And uh, brush strokes are fine for some paintings, but this one I did not want to have a lot of brush strokes in it. And I added just a small amount to my red there. Small amount of white. Alright, let's do our chocolate. And I'm just going to mix these two, the dark chocolate and the burnt umber, and get another coat on here. Pretty sure on my first one I, I did mix that black in with the second layer, but I'm liking this a little bit better. So, um, you know, whichever color you choose, be it burnt umber or dark chocolate, um, you don't need to add the black on the second layer unless you really want that dark chocolate color like I got on here which is super dark but I think this is going to be a nice nice color for our chocolate a little bit of thick paint there 
So I'm just taking my finger and pushing against that so that I can push it into the brown paint and remove the buildup that I have there. seems a little bit thick here. I'm not sure my surface was very dry when I started painting this brown because it definitely feels a little thick. All right, let's go on to our um, green areas. And that's our leaf green here. So I'm just going straight leaf green. Again, you can mix that white in there again if you like that lighter color green. And I'm going to go over my red one more time because I feel like it needs a third. third layer on it. Alright, let's get this dry. And I'll put the third layer on my red. <clears throat> and then we're going to start making things beautiful. Sure that's cool. Take my red and I've just got kind of a wash of this color. Something in my paint there. I'm just going to wash this over and then quickly dry it. Um, we're going to start adding our seed areas. I think we'll finish the red part of our strawberry. Then our leaves and then we'll finish out with the chocolate. So that's looking delicious, I must say. Okay, so for the seed areas, you can put your line drying on and add those back in if you want to, but um, I'm just going to wing it. And you can use an ankle brush or a round brush. I think originally I just used a round brush and kind of dabbed it in. But I'm going to take my red and mix a tiny little bit of black in with it. Teeny tiny little bit. Just a scooch in there. Just make it a little bit darker than what our base color is. And then if you need, if you need your lines in there, or your seeds, you can go in here and draw some in. Okay. Alright, just put a few in there. We don't need a ton. And where those lines are, we're going to put this darker color. This is that red with a tiny little bit of black. I'm just kind of creating a little bit of an oval shape here. not doing realism here so we're not uh, getting too carried away with details at this point. Okay I want those to get dry so let's just go ahead and work on our leaves. Now if you need to know where your leaf separations are maybe this one goes across, this one comes up here, maybe this one goes more in the front here and here, I don't know, could go there. It's totally up to you, your leaves. You get to be in charge. <laughs> that one because I think I want it to go that way. So I'm still with my little angle brush. I'm going to take my green and mix a tiny little bit of black with it so I can create a really dark green. This is going to make uh, like an evergreen color. Maybe not quite an evergreen but a darker green. 
And I'll put it on all the lower edges of my leaves. And just mix as you need it. It is okay if it is not the exact same color as the mix you just did. That actually makes things look a little bit better when everything is not the same. And then we're going to put a little bit down here. The base of this one. And we've got a good start. I'm going to go all along next to my strawberry here so everything can be kind of connected. Okay. Super easy. Alright, let's get some yellow out. Any kind of bright yellow will do. Whatever you got. I'm going to take my yellow and green and mix them together. Probably two yellows. Maybe three. I want this to be a really bright green. I've got probably too much water in my brush for this. Because my yellow is very transparent, so... I'm going to use quite a bit of yellow and just a little bit of green. All right, put this on the top edge of our leaves. How pretty is that? This is just yellow and green. More yellow, just a tiny bit of green, just to brighten it. So nice! I love it! Okay, we're going to rinse that brush and we're going to go back with just some yellow. I'm going to make sure that's dry. Just some yellow. Just a little bit. Don't overdo it. Got some of that dark green on my brush. Just a little bit. Maybe on the tip of your leaf. Just wherever you want the brightest part to be. to get a definite shape here and then figure out which one of these is more on top. So I'm thinking that one right there. Maybe a little bit more on top. If you need to go back with your shading color, you certainly can. I think I'm okay with it. I'm going to add a little bit of a white highlight on here. We'll be done with the leaves then. Just a little bit. Scoot some on there. I'm just using my little round brush, but a detail liner, which is what I'm going to use on the seeds here in a minute, will work just great. So just a little bright highlight. Not much paint on my brush. This will fade in there because white just does. Okay. And we can come back and brighten that or put more yellow on it. I, I personally think more yellow needs to be on it. So I think I'll just put a little bit more yellow just with my little round brush. Just brighten those up a little bit more. Alright, those look good enough. 
All right, let's move down to our seeds. And we're gonna take our detail liner and some black and put our little seeds in. This is not a very big strawberry, so you don't have to make your seeds ginormous. We are going to highlight them a little bit, so we do want to know that they're there. Just wherever you put those little dark spots. Okay, so we've got our little seeds on there. We're going to start shading on our red now. Make sure my seeds are dry. We're going to take our red. Our red and a little bit of black. And make a dark, dark red here. Again, you can get out multiple colors and create some you know, like some cranberry wine or some alizarin crimson, but I did not see the point of doing that on this quick little project. I just want to get some colors on here. And we've got our black, so we can just darken our colors as we need to. We could even use the green to darken. So don't feel like you have to have tons of different colors out. I want to repeat that because I want that shading to come up much farther into the strawberry. Make sure it's dry, make sure it's cool. A little bit more red in the brush. This side is going to be the darkest side. Do you want to bring that up into the strawberry a little bit more and definitely up here by the leaves. Okay, go I need a little bit of moisture in my brush. It doesn't have to be quite out there on the edge, but we do want a little bit of shadow here where our chocolate comes onto our strawberry. I still need that to be darker. It's not quite there for me. Uh, I'm going to take my round brush and that mix and we're just going to create a little bit darker in between some sections here. We're going to come and lighten over there. So just put a little bit on there. This is going to start creating a little bit more shadow over here. dry that and do that one more time. I need a little bit more black in my mix of red and black. I don't want my strawberry to turn black, but I do want this really dark color. Over here. Because this is our shadow edge. And up next to our leaves. Bring that out just a little bit more. And then right here next to our chocolate, we want it darker. Tap so I can soften that and blend it out. And that looks a little bit better for our shadow. I think that looks good. All right, let's take our detail liner and some white. And we're going to highlight on these seeds just ever so slightly. And we don't have to do them all. Maybe just a little, tuck a little, little bit of teeny tiny little highlights in this darker area. I don't want much coming off on there, so if it does, take your finger and kind of scuff it and settle it down in there. But 
these on here. I definitely want them to be brighter. I've got a wild hair here. Okay. That looks good. Now let's create our highlight on the strawberry. So we're going to take our round brush and some white. It's thinned white, so there's not a lot, you know, not a, pig, not a lot of pigment in the brush. And I'm kind of dry brushing around my seeds here. Creating a little bit of highlight and texture on our strawberry. And any areas that you want to be a little bit brighter, you can just go over more than once. We're going to do along that edge here in a second and really brighten that. Okay, a bright little highlight on there. Super incredibly easy. Okay, let's do our chocolate lines on here. And this is where you can just draw them on. We curve around our strawberry. You can have them stopping like right about here. That will give your strawberry a little bit more thickness. And look a little bit different. Again, I'm going to take my round. I'm going to get some fresh white out. and. We are going to um, paint that in. So I'm going to load my brush up and push my brush kind of flat so that I can get a nice thick line of white chocolate on my strawberry. You can have thin lines. You can do a whole bunch of little thin lines. Just go find some chocolate covered strawberries and if there's a design that you like on your strawberry then you can certainly do it that way. I mean you can do these thick lines and then come back with some really thin ones. But I'm just trying to keep it a little bit simple for you today. Now you may have to go over your white a second time if it's not as bright as you would like it. I'm going to quickly dry that. We're going to shade on the lower part of our strawberry with your brown and black mix to kind of make a soft black color. Okay, we want to shadow this edge here. Our brown and our black mixed together. Ooh, maybe a little bit too much black. Let me grab a little bit more brown, put that in there. And just bring that up. We want it to be a similar darkness as the strawberry is, okay? All right, let's do some highlighting on the strawberry, and I'm going to do my white. I'm going to do the chocolate area first, and maybe a little bit of our brown. I could go to my smaller brush here for sure. i remove a lot of that, because I want to come along here and almost dry brush this highlight on here. on chocolate. I haven't to put any highlight on the our brightest highlight on the top of the strawberry yet. Um, we're going to come down this edge. This is dry brush that that white with just a tiny little bit of our um, chocolate color. Whatever chocolate color you're you're using. Very, very dry brushy. That's why I'm dragging my finger over it to um, soften it in there. I don't want it to, um, you know, be too much too soon because we are going to add a brighter highlight on there. So let's do a tiny bit of our red and some white 
not very much red because that'll be bright pink. We don't really want bright pink. And we're going to do the same kind of stuff here. Dry brushy. Blend that out a little bit because we're coming back with our white to brighten all that up. Now I do want to go over my white on my chocolate here because I do want it to be, ooh, okay, that was a lot of paint. I do want it to be much brighter up here on this edge. So I'm going to brighten that. Okay, I'm going to wipe my brush off. Maybe get just a little bit brighter in here. Not too far. Not too far in, just a little bit, because we're going to come in with our brightest highlight now. Of just white, we're almost done. We're going to get ready to remove our tape. So just a little side load of some white. Bring it down just a little bit, and then pull it into the strawberry. shadow area. So I'm going to remove that just a little bit. And then just dry brush. Alright, so I just want to finish off that highlight with a um, bright, bright white highlight. First I want to get my chocolate looking like chocolate, or my white looking like white again. I'm just going to stay with this round brush, but you can certainly go to a detail liner and just a little bit of a brighter edge. I should probably get that chocolate off my finger, <laughs> my chocolate color, because every time I blend it out, I'm turning my white brown. want to clean up the edge here because I don't want the brown to be too noticeable there. Okay, and then a little bit along here. That's a little bit wide, so I'm going to take that off right there, and then we are going to remove our tape. I think we're looking pretty good here. It's a pretty fast, easy little project, so let's remove our tape so we can see the beautiful strawberry that we have here. that I could pull and that way I could pull it all off hopefully and there we go look at that how easy is that how fun is that so beautiful once we remove that tape it just literally pops off of the surface there so that's it for this one you guys I hope that you have enjoyed this please give me a thumbs up if you have enjoyed it please subscribe please comment and please share you guys all have a wonderful wonderful Valentine's Day and I'll see you on the next one bye bye everybody